vai dar tudo errado. Brilliant.
coyote hanging in the backyard. The RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Of course. What can I help you with? Of course. Where to? <laughs> oh, that. That's right there, in the yard. Even all the way over here, there's a drop of death in the spring air. It's there, in the yard, right through the hole in the fence. No. Even all the way over here, there's a drop of death. What do you mean? Yes, sir. District of Martinez. This intersection is called Roundabout North. Roundabout. He knows where we are. He just wants directions. There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements, not a lot really. The yes. harbor gates, <coughs> some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store too. Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident probably, just coast. There's a little fishing village there, and a fish market, but that got closed down ages ago. It's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. No problem. Me? I am just a gardener. I am pleased to meet you too, officer. Of course. I won't hold you back. If there's a corpse, then you're going to need those gloves for the autopsy. Sure, keep them. I have another pair. Yippee! So cute! So sweet! Oh. Oh. <coughs>
Welcome to Rivachol. Oh. <coughs> uh. The remark is addressed to you. It's addressed to the lieutenant. Oh. That's where we are. Don't you welcome to Rivachol me. My grandfather came here from a 3,000 year old racist isolationist culture, while your ancestors came to this island a mere 300 years ago. Ooh, oh, oh my god. Every school of thought and government has failed in the city, but I love it nonetheless. It belongs to me as much as it belongs to you. You tell him! It's men like you who keep Revachol divided, making it that much harder for everyone to climb out of this post-war limbo. What he means is, fixation on the Revacholian nation makes it harder for Revachol to actually attain self-determination. Oh, come on, man. I just said, uh, welcome to Revachol. Uh... It's a lorry driver thing. <laughs> oh, come on. It is the way to come to the sure. Come I on. know exactly what you meant. You think my kind doesn't belong here. That I should watch myself and behave. But you see, I'm an officer of the RCN. It's actually my job to make sure you behave. I would advise you to remember that. Silence. The air between them becomes tense. Oh, I love you so much. Your partner needs backup. Now's your moment to shine. Uh, uh, I don't want to push. It's easy success. Fucking A, Kim. You do make a cute couple. You know that. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. The lieutenant exhales and resumes his regular calmness. Okay. Whatever you say, officers. Oh my god, jeez. <laughs> he smells of heavy motor oils, and his breath of high tar content cigarettes, probably Astra Whites. Oh, I don't want to talk about it, but I guess I should. Uh, it's about biological determinism, natural law, the sorting of the races. Jesus. Not the most popular topic nowadays, with a coalition in charge and all. You might want to change the topic. That is, bury your head under the sand like Calm common sheep. sheep. The sheep all. You get us on his feet on proper guy now. You're just some racist. <laughs> Oh, you're just a racist. I'm not just racist. Look, I've read books. books. Huh? Uh. The science of racial theory has all been proved, even if uh, some people don't want to accept it. <laughs> people who've studied these things say that you and me are superior by design. So, uh, naturally, <laughs> we Occidentals should be in charge. Obviously, you can see the merits in that. No. <laughs> <laughs> you and me. <laughs> um, I can't tell you, but if the period is fine, Jesus. Uh, uh. 
So, lately, we Occidentals have experienced an unfortunate downturn when members of the superior race cease to believe in their innate superiority. They stop competing for resources. Uh, okay, and? This concerns you, policemen, so you better be vigilant. The damn kits are showing up good lately. Same with the mosquitoes. And the other intruder species, too. They're on the precipice of cultural victory. Victory, Jesus. Um... Cultural victory? What is this then? Uh huh. <coughs> uh huh. Is it like a green? Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's true. Also, you need to realize the dangers. Of mixing races. Oh, Jesus Who knows what might happen if people don't stay in their birth place? You might end up with a new sub race with unknown characteristics leading to extra competition. That's why you've got to control the no. offspring. Um, um, <laughs> what is this? Don't push your luck, runt. Jesus. Okay, that's crazy. Crazy start to the fucking game. Sick. <gasps> oh my god, that is so cute, that is so cute, that is so cute. Tulips too. So cute. So magical and wonderful. Oh my god. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around <coughs> or something. Everything is out on the shelves. Yeah. What's that magazine she's reading? You mean this? Oh. This is Pop Stars. It's got like famous people in it. It's not for sale. Looks like it also has something called. Police de la Mode, featured on page 34. This speaks to you. I approve of that. <laughs> um, fashion police. It's not. That's stupid. <clears throat> she pops her raspberry flavored bubblegum and nods. Uh -huh. Her shoulders tense. She shuffles back only slightly. Bewilderment and repulsion root her in place. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. The lieutenant frowns at you before turning to the clerk with an apologetic half smile. No, I'm creepy. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jesus, I'm crying. <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. Frit? A 7 to 11 grocery store. Mm. I think they think that the extra tea makes it funkier. It doesn't. It doesn't. The story goes that normal Fritta with two teas, a men's workwear shop in Vredefort, was already taken. So when Fritta Retail Inc. grew into a multinational corporation, they had to add an extra letter. To avoid trademark infringement. Nah. <laughs> um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... Um, I don't know. No need to worry. 
It's just standard procedure for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know, okay? Oh, okay. So sweet. Uh huh. I just leave. I don't wanna be weird. <laughs> that broke my heart. Uh. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants <coughs> and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. The packages are small, discreet, sloppily stacked, making them easier to take unnoticed. No need to worry about knocking over a display. <laughs> I don't have money. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals 10 cents. Hmm? Oh, that's the tear machine. It's a machine for tear. You know, you find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, and put it in the machine, then it gives you money. You need a bag, I guess. We used to have some, but we gave them all out, so... Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure... I love her voice. I love everybody's voice, even the racist NPC. I love all the accents. Her accent is so on point for an annoyed ass... Like, teenager worker yes. just being annoyed. <clears throat> Me? I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Oh, <laughs> <That's so cute. laughs> Me? Yes, you. You, sir. <sighs> ah, if you insist. What do you want to know? You're wearing glasses now. Tell me a secret for yourself. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> uh, I don't know if she he'll. I don't know. What do you mean? I have no idea what you're talking about. The lieutenant's conceptualization skills must be rather rudimentary. I can't say that it does, no. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. The lieutenant produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. We all have our different mediums. His is written. That's because I'm half Seolite, or quarter. My father's father was from Seoul. So Ooh. was my grandmother, but from my mother's side. It's not an interesting topic. Seoul? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's um, the Koreans thing. Um, is it capital? I think it is a capital. It's a big city. It's a part of the world, officer. A geopolitical entity and a geographic division. I told you it wouldn't be interesting. Seoul is a protectionist, isolationist, pan isolar <coughs> state west of the Insulindian Isola. Actually, it's quite interesting. Some would even say mysterious. You're barking at the wrong tree. I don't speak a word of Seolite. I've never met either one of my grandparents, and I've never been to Seoul. I'm a regular Reva Cholière. Reva Reva That's so pretty. A point of pride to him. Oh. No. No. Okay. The lieutenant nods. That's correct. You feel a slight urge to put the lieutenant down for this. But you can't quite muster enough testosterone. <laughs> oh. 
Are they? They are mostly just cumbersome. Good. Let's change the subject. Okay, let's go critters. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Their logo is the bloodless rose, pure white, untouched by harm. Um, just ask me if you need anything from Saint Baptiste. We don't stock prescription meds, but we do have nosafed, duramine, magnesium, and hypnogamma. 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 A colorful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles line the shop wall, inviting you closer. The bottles wink at you in the light. The smokes, too, glitter in their wrapping. It's like looking into a kind of heaven. Your knees are weak. Aww. There, in that dark green glass, all in vain. The great flowing river of warmth. Wine, alcohol. Beer, alcohol. Love, alcohol. Oh. Nuh uh. Look at him. Bye bye, hugs. Bugs, bugs. Okay. Say classics gardening gloves in classic canary yellow. Maybe you should retire. Take up gardening as a hobby. It's worth a thought. Cute. He's <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Oh yeah, I haven't had my shoe yet. Oh. Oh my god, people. How idiomatic. Oh, I don't wanna. Should I? Do Hazy on the notion of a scab. Smells like politics, though. Maybe it's got something to do with the flask he reaches for from time to time. Poor and down nothing. A kind of a worm. Content with mere survival. They come, they want to do our job for shittier pay, screwing over both themselves and us. Everybody loses. Gotta be bloody stupid, freaking evil to scam. Or I guess, scared maybe. But scared of what? Of who? Personally, I'd rather beg than scam. If the gentleman shouting on the street came begging, maybe they'd have gotten something. Come on. <laughs> So 
Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. These scabs ain't begging. They ain't holding on to their integrity. I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> Speaking of, what brings the RCM here, to the wild north? Come to see the strife? Murder, huh? That sounds like a lot of hard work. You'd never see me investigating a murder. <laughs> That's okay. I have no idea what I'm doing Aww. either. I don't even know what day it is. Don't tell me. It's a better day that way. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> that is so cute. <laughs> Just no idea what I'm doing. <clears throat> My friend, I respect the right to roam. The open range awaits. I don't operate in that capacity. I'm not a granter of passage. The passage grants itself. If it's all so simple, why don't the strike breakers just go up the stairs? Aye. Walk right past Measurehead and go in. Yeah, the two and a half meter tall Semini Supremus is there. Walk right past him, then press the button to unlock the door, then go past him uh -huh. again, okay. and you enter the arbor through the office. Está. The man whispers a jaunty tune. A coastal breeze ruffles his hair. You know, serious business. I'm sure the big boss will be glad to tell you. You'll have to ask him first. He's a chatty guy. Wants to talk about the strike, too. Just can't break the command structure and tell you now. What a nice guy. What a nice friend. What a snarky. Lorry stuck in the traffic jam. This big, heavy, grad-made machine is well kept for such an old machine. The windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a lorry man's cabin with personal belongings, stickers, insignia. The driver has adorned his space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations about honor, strength, and purity are glued to various panels. A large metal pendant hangs from the rear view mirror. The pendant features a sun crown with wavy rays. It is the seal of Royalist era Revachon. Ah. Uh, yeah. The lorry stuck sense. in the windows are clear. The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep. Large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn into the curtains. A book with ragged edges catches your notice. The front cover features a large, muscular man. The title reads, Man from Eelmdal in the Lost City of the Pygmies. Makes sense. Racist nationalist paraphernalia. Not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. Ooh. Uh -uh. Likely, yes. This guy's proud of who he is. Drapes it all over his machine. Okay, okay. Okay. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, 
old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air. A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip III, the Squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachol, son of Philip II, the opulent, father of Philip IV, the insane. As you look up, you notice something about the statue. There are some odd indentations on the king's chest piece. Even by the standards of the Philippian kings, old sumptuous Philip was known for his profligacy. Well, he blew through well. the whole national treasury, starting the decline of one of the penultimate century's greatest superpowers, the suzerain of Revachol. His own maladministration foreshadowed the fall of the monarchy during the anti-centennial revolution, an end to his family line and the monarchy on the Insulindian Isola. Stories have it that he had his bedroom converted into a treasure chamber, where he stored unfathomable wealth. Krugerrands, bars of gold, ornate weaponry, armor, and various chalices. He called it the Sol Auron. It was obscene. There were whispers he slept on a huge pile of gold-dipped feathers, like some obese dragon. Instead of a bed, like, like a, a normal, normal person. person. <laughs> yeah, it's true. The king is a king and he can do anything. But wait, you haven't even heard about his fabled cocaine addiction. The what now? <laughs> you see, old Philippe wasn't just good at squandering the, the national now? treasure well, of, of gold and ceremonial weaponry. He was also a prodigious snorter of nose okay. candy. That's what the revolutionaries said 150 years later, right before they emptied out the royal mausoleum and dumped his majesty's mortal remains in the Insulindian Bay. Beneath the cold waters of the Insulindian Bay, thrown there by the revolutionaries, the original was blown apart by communards, then further damaged during the landing of the coalition's airships during the turn of the century revolution when Martinez was leveled. Most historians think the coalition's hasty landing may have ultimately saved the statue. If the communards had more time, they would have reduced it up to even finer pieces. Some years ago, a group of liberal, artistically inclined individuals, designers mostly, thought it would be ironic to restore the statue of the most wasteful ruler of Revachol in the poorest part of the city. The statue is supposed to capture the moment it was blown apart, like an instant frozen in time, a rare butterfly trapped in amber, floating on a sea of shit. People in Martinez tend to disagree, as do many prominent art critics and thought leaders. With more nuanced, those critics might have it wrong though. There's more to it than just ironism, but you can't say what precisely. Perhaps this art mystery will be solved at a later time? Philip III, the squanderer, however, with his bronze face up in the air, doesn't seem concerned about what the hoi polloi think of him in death. Not that he ever did in life either. Something with great kinetic energy seems to have impacted the cuirass around where the heart is. A bullet? Someone shot him in the heart. Interesting. Okay, I can't see it, but I take your word for it. Oh, uh, I can see it, but there. Uh... Well, Martinez is riddled with bullet holes. This place saw a lot of action during the revolution, but the statue is recently renovated, so maybe a joke? target practice or a political statement? <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. Why not? 
What this shows us is guns aren't too uncommon here, and people still shoot them, sometimes at kings. The king stands high above you, surveying the bay, mute and indifferent to your sightings. Oh, I love that. Uh, I absolutely love everything about it. It's so much. It's perfect. along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands and there is a warm smile on her face. The photo, an ambrotype from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. A Stars Riker, one of the finest Jimps made motor carriages ever. An oldie, but a goldie. goldie. Not many people outside of Grad and Revachol West, too, it appears. A Stars Riker KK2. That's Ooh. a classic model. Never thought I'd see another one repainted after what happened last time. No, I don't know what happened last time. An old case for my precinct. A couple what of Jim's migrants it? saw a stagiaco stopped in the street, painted just like this, muddy brown. Murdered the driver on the spot. They said it was an honor killing, Hussar style. The Jim's community protested the trial, flying the banners of some old king or whatever. 5,000 came to protest. Correction, 4,395 the fourth largest public protest of a criminal trial in Revachon. <laughs> <No. Before you stands a motor carriage. The body vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. The Cuprice Kinema motor carriage. Um. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. The tire tracks were left here by an unknown event that took Ooh. place some days ago. It's a message written in the language of burnt rubber. Some of that rubber stuck to the tiles right in front of the whirling in rags. This is point A. The driver started and then accelerated straight into the fence. The driver proceeded to back out of the yard before heading south. Mm -hmm. Must have been in a hurry. There it is. Kuno's got this. If there 
ever was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness. Ugly oh, yeah, not a goofy Kuno. Can't talk, pig. Shit's coming up strong. Throwing rocks. Shit coming up strong. That sounds good. Joyous. You should hang out with this kid and see what that juicy shit is all about. Oh my god, what? What is this? I mean drugs. The kid's on drugs. Oh. Yeah, Kuno! Ride the lightning, Kuno! Kuno's riding it, see? The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him, Kuno! The that. fuck does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. No. Kim, Kim, what should we do? The fuck are you talking about? He's calling us f Kuno. He says we're fucking each other. Jesus Christ. I know. <laughs> what the fuck that just happened? Okay, um, Kim? We shouldn't do anything. I don't tempt such That's forces. Not... You will see. The language these kids are using, pure unfettered id. There will be no reasoning with those creatures. I don't like this. The corpse looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not <coughs> look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in even through your clenched nostrils. Active decay. It's took it to throw up with his arm. No one is judging. Oh my gosh, shut the fuck up. Please. What do we do about it? Should we get him off? There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated. What are we gonna do? We're just looking yes. at it. Um, well, we uh, found the body. We was gonna leave it there. I thought we were supposed to, you know, do some. Oh, I can't fucking reach it. So I was supposed to, you know, get it out of there. An so inconspicuous I pile of the roofing material, Etonite. Because there's Ooh. a secret door hidden behind the panels of Eton. <coughs> That's why they're too orderly. There it is. You see a shabby little door. Yippee! What is this then? A tool shed? Let's investigate. Yippee! Yay, I did something. I did something good. I can't fucking reach this. Oh, that's scary. Jesus Christ. Why 
do I need to look all the way there to look at that? Looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. When the wind ruffles the cloak, you can most definitely see a white rectangle on its back. Yes, it's probably yours. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. aggressive up here. The lieutenant looks at the enormous crane towering in the distance over the container yard. That machine is a Kvalsund 1020HK. Is it? Kvalsund makes a lot of heavy equipment, but this is phenomenal, even for them. <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. We were focusing on your cloak here. The cloak? I do think it's yours, yes. As to whether you should go for it? Well, it doesn't seem too dangerous. Two meter stops? Whenever you're ready to do it, I'll be right behind you. The cloak looks like a bag of goodies floating in the wind. Who knows what its pockets may hide. No, I don't need that in my life. This postcard depicts an ill-advised residential area overlooking the Jamra Quarter, 30-story building, vine, the hillside like sarcophagi. An ominous fog already rising from behind. These are the last boom years. In 39, the project fails catastrophically leaving behind an opiate and hepatitis B infested slum. Feels more trying to be a ear. Okay. Fucking crackhead kid. No fucking meth or some. Should I throw up? There, he's still. Maybe I should throw up. Who you know the pig's getting pretty close to me? Come to snuff my shit out, I think. 
Looks like it's time for me <laughs> to go, Kuno. Pig's come to take me in. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, Pig? Come from the woods, good Davidu. You don't want to go there with me. You don't want to see what I've seen. Don't be traumatizing here. Get the fuck out of here. The fuck? I'll die before I squeal, pig. Murder was the case, was the case they gave me. I'll die before I squeal, pig. You don't want to fuck with me. I got my hands bloody. I'm not here, pig. You're not seeing this. You can still see the top of her hat from behind the... F okay, I guess. I'll die before I... What's this kid shit? Fucking mind games. I'd rather die than squeal. Get the fuck out of here, face. You got done. Talk to me. So it's a girl. Interesting. It really is. Oh, Can't you see I'm throwing rocks? Fuck no! Kuno doesn't buy that shit! Fucking entrapment shit! Fast. This kid has got street smarts. Alright. Entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show The kid moves his hands like a basketball player dribbling fast. Shit, load pig. What's your question? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. This is where you quickly ask him questions. Real cop questions. Like a cop. Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That's... Yeah, you tell the faggoty, Kuno. Kuno's fuck imp. Kuno uses the fuck imp for target practice. He's trying to hide the fact that he doesn't know. Kuno knows what you meant. Kuno's not a snitch. That's all. Trying to make Kuno sing into the popo phone. Probably climbed. Kuno was busy down the road when that shit went down. You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. I don't know. Some fucking mesk or, or I don't know. Some other place. Night City. Kuno is in fucking Night City. There is no Night City anywhere. Uh, that sounds like the name uh, of a city in some pulp science fiction novel. Yeah. Kuno didn't smoke him if that's what you mean. Thanks, Kuno. That's one name you can now cross off the list. You're testing Kuno. Get lost, f You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? Shit. Get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. He can't do that, Kuno. He's trying to fuck at you again. Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? I'll just go through. Oh, that! Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. <laughs> what? <laughs> eh. What is this shit? Fucking. On yourself. This is weird level shit. Kuno doesn't go there. Fuck your shit back to normal. What is this? <laughs> no, they don't like me. Did 
They don't like me being self-deprecating. Kids don't get it. Don't fucking get it. <coughs> well played. No one saw that coming. <laughs> no one saw it coming. So small. <laughs> That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have that sparkle in your Stop. eyes. Stop. <laughs> it's a vitamin pig. Don't you know anything? You could use some. Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker, and you... Oh, don't teach him, Kuno! He's gonna use it against you, Kuno! You're not getting this, pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. Fuck you, pig! Don't do mag! You're gonna OD and you're gonna fucking die. Is it? You got pretty fucked. Kuno's surprised you've still got your head after all that. Don't sweat it, drunk pig. Kuno will keep your nasty secrets. Kuno's not snitching. He's saying you climbed up there. He probably saw you do it. Oh. Yep, that conclusively explains how the coat got up there. Course you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys his gimps? Just got a fly pig. Not everyone can fly like Kuno. You're old. You'll never make it. Moose piss has made you scared in the head. Moose piss is probably alcohol. That's all there is to it then. Don't be a pansy. Just jump. No. Good call, pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? Look at that fucking shit. You're trying to get Kuno killed. Fuck does Kuno know? Kuno's not a fucking act. The lieutenant takes a quick note. It's a trap, Kuno. Don't climb it, Kuno. Don't know. Kip that's gardener used to work there. Kipped is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Eri Oppergite descent. It used to be a common first name among the Eri Oppergites of Ilmara. Not so much anymore. Yeah, that's what Kuno said. She couldn't handle the heat, so she took off. Kuno can take it. Shit, nothing to Kuno. Look, Kuno doesn't explain shit. Kuno just says shit. Yeah, her. What was she doing in the greenhouse in March anyway? What kind of gardening is done in March? Fish know. is sometimes used to fertilize the soil a few weeks before planting something. Maybe she was preparing the garden. Yes, it yes. seems suspicious. You don't like things being like that. that. Suspicious. suspicious. Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno's Kuno, pig? It's always Kuno, never I. Clearly the kid's using the third-person perspective as a shield. Yeah, Kuno's in a fucking gang. In a bang gang. Kuno bangs for Magie, bangs for Mazda. Ba Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! He's gonna put his hands on you! Help! Pig's got Kuno! Help! Rape! Jesus. Help! He's got the Kuno! Help! Everyone can hear. You need to get the hell out of here before. Yeah? Get out of here before the Kuno beats the shit out of you? Yeah, that's right. Drag your fat ass out of here, fat boy, before Kuno fucks you. Oh. Oh. 
despair creeps into you, getting fat on your weakness. <coughs> Whatever noble intentions you once had as a police officer, it's eaten oh, them no. all Jesus up. Jesus Christ, now. I'm scared. Jesus. You're still coming up with sentences. That's a step up from total annihilation, right? I'm quitting. Oh. He watches you melt down stoically from behind the lenses of his glasses. Nothing you can say would make you feel any better now. Cop gives up the detective genre for social realism. Another police no! officer resigned from the RCM following a nervous breakdown. He now lives under a bridge, drinking and occasionally throwing excrement at passers-by, shouting, I never loved that woman. When asked to comment, former colleagues objected to the theory that his psychological disintegration was precipitated by his wife leaving him. It's because the furrows lost that match, said Captain Patolomy Price, once the man's superior officer. <laughs> It's, it's because he couldn't get a big it's gun from acquisitions. Dog. And anyway, police work really burns you out after a while. Satellite officer Jean Vitmer, the deranged former cop's partner, commented. Sergeant Matt Torson, another former colleague, did not propose any theories, merely saying, whatever happened to him wasn't about birds. He got fucked, that's all. That is so sad. I fucking lost. <laughs> I fucking lost. Jesus. No. I didn't know what to do. Fuck, I'm so fucking far away. Jesus. Oh my god, Jesus Christ. I don't have that side. Devastating. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slushed snow. <coughs> These tracks are not interesting at all. Let the street sweeper just sweep them away. What? No! Oh my god, I'm so sad. Oh. I lost all my fucking shit. Bro, what am I supposed to do now? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus. God fucking damn it. <clears throat> what am I to do now? I don't know. Now <laughs> I lost some my experience. <sighs> Oh, 
so fucking upset. Wondering, man. Bastards! We have a right to hold up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. You here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down. We're here to fight for a cause. Stripes usually have problems with people who have causes. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to- Besides, we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking, cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. Rights of people, rights of workers to have his it. manner of speaking is wooden, the tone of voice bland and uninspired, almost as if compiling replies from a set of learned phrases. Maybe you should ask them the questions like why we're not allowed to make a living here. We have families to feed you of shit. So do we, Scott. We were promised work. We'd be in there, working, if the bastards hadn't shut the gates. Main gate's locked. Would take heavy ordnance to bust it open and try to get in through the secretary's office. Doors locked, and I don't mean the scrawny mess bunk either. I mean head measurer, or whatever he is. Like civilized folk, you mean? These native fucks don't understand. It would be better for the neighborhood if you went home, at least for now, if you can't get in anyway. No! They will give up eventually, or get drunk. Leave the button unguarded. Then, we charge. Have fun. <laughs> I know nothing about it. No! My kitty press the button! Stop fucking playing around. Smelly kitty. You smell. Where is the kitty? Wouldn't put it past these harbor bugs. Right to work! It's shameful. Cops doing nothing. You should bring back up, open up the gates for us. Blockading gainful employment for workers is a crime. Why not? I see numerous reasons not to pick a side in this local matter. Pity. Let us work! stuck in the traffic jam. The windows are clear. The driver has a, a large... It is a seal of royalist... The driver, a large... It is a seal of royalist era. The back end of the cab, a book. Racist nationalist paraphernalia. Not unusual in this... Likely, yes. This guy's product... Silver plaque on the stat. Oh. As you look up, you notice something about the statue. There, even by the standards, well, his own Philip the Third's ludicrous bronze likeness looks defiantly up into the sky. A silver plaque. As you look up, you notice something about something with great. Con someone shot him in the heart. Okay, well, 
Martinez is riddled with bullet holes. This place saw a lot of action during the revolution. But the statue, why not? What this shows us is guns are- The king stands high above you. Small, the photo, and wait. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Why? I just told you why. Oh my god. The woman still has her eyes fixed on the photo. No response. Wherever. Oh, that's awfully sweet. Just, you know, leave her be. A star's Riker, one of the finest, not many people outside of Grad. A star's Riker KK2. That's a classic model. An old case for my pre. They said it was. Correction. 4,395. The fourth largest public protest of a criminal trial in Revachon. Yes, detective? You sure you're not Jimsk? Yes, you're sure you're not. Or if you are, it's only in that Revisholian way. Four to five percent maximum. For something, aunt. Come to tell me to fuck off again? Oh, not much anymore. I'm here to pick up some cargo, but uh, the dock workers are on strike, so uh, it's a sit and wait on your ass situation. Apples. Apples is exactly the kind of thing you'd say if you had something to hide. Yeah, apples. I take it you had other questions? Oh, not much anymore. The strike? <laughs> I'd have been at it for a while. A month. Two months, maybe. But this here is j Apples. Apples is exactly the kind of thing you'd say if you had- Look, as detective, I come from a long line of law. Oh, I'm here to pick up a load of fucking apples, man. Just regular, Koiko picked apples. Koiko may be another derogative for a person from Grad. You think? Yep, it's one of their main exports. They grow them down south Yekokata. In fact, Yekokata is a desolate wasteland whose name literally translates to Zone of Ecological Catastrophe. It features no scenic vistas and supports virtually no plant or a He means the people living in Grad. Yeah, you know, Gradniks, Gradvolk, those degenerates from Grad. Oh, so it's an ethnic slur. <laughs> hey, if the name and description fit by the very grace of nature, who am I to say otherwise? Uh, did you miss the part <laughs> where I said they aren't here yet? Besides, <laughs> so even if I did have some, I wouldn't go putting my nose in them. Huh? Relax, you've got all you can get here. He probably doesn't even know what he's hauling, even if it is something unsavory. So he'd remain unaccountable. Oh yeah, they're a big deal. My great grandfather was a carter, had a royal license and everything. Mm. We've tried to hold on to our privileges. <laughs> Someone with a cart. What did you think it was? That's how deep into history our thing reaches. Sure, fuck it is. We have a guild and everything. Huh? Very ancient, very prestigious. Hell no. It's a guild. Invitation only. Guild. Unions work for the rich fucks. They're basically the same. Been trying to fuck us out. <laughs> Trusting street thugs with their goods is going to fuck him right up the ass. I've gained experience because I am smart. Oh, I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer Feel like a 
traveler. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. From another planet. Hey there. It's the jam, my man. The air from the east is thick with the smell of crude oils, heavy metals, and other byproducts of them. It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Upon. Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazout. Mazout is an antiquated term for heavy fuel oils. This man has a barely suppressed performative streak. Or he just likes unusual words. Or both. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. So tell me, what do you need? He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. I've been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. Ask for his conclusion. A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. Huh. Take care. It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands. No way in or out. Going on strike will probably <coughs> help you dodge a bullet or two. Some pretty wild stuff I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town too. Like a strike negotiator type. They know what's up. Ah, yes, from the Wild Pines. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. Maybe you should. Cops don't get paid much and the hours are long. Plus, you can get shot. Why not? The RCM is a self-managing organization that operates on donations. We promote our own leaders. It would be like striking against your own mother. Your mother. <laughs> yes, but do continue. You were asking about the strike? They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. ka -ching. He doesn't blame them, but he's not on their side. That's for sure. Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse, you still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame them, really. Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. He tries his best to look nonchalant. But there's a rigidity in him, as if trying to conceal something warm and deep beneath a cool exterior. Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Relax. He's merely joking. Ha! <laughs> no, I'm joking, my man. Found runs a nice, clean business. This hollow cargo is mostly sporting goods. You know, tracksuits. They usually get shipped to Grad in the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. This rockin' beauty. 
Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. You interested? A motor lorry, also called a camion, on Caillou and neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up enough to be some sort of found rust bucket. Maybe the A6? Good eye, my man. Yup, she's an old one, but reliable. Me and her spent a long time together. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. Yep, no. Empathy one. Don't be a stranger. Don't be a stranger. This is cute. Before you stands vapor and this must be in the cabin. You are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. A scent of leather work and heavy fuel oils washes over you. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge... There's no use pressing the heat button. It won't start without the ignition key. Translation. We're not going anywhere right now. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch, and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. Your fingers waste no time closing around the handle. Clutch disengaged. Release the handle. Clutch drops. Right foot yearns for the familiar touch of the accelerator pedal. You have synced with the machine's mechanical circulation. The handle is pulled back. Somewhere deep inside the drivetrain, the disc is... In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand, heavier than you'd think. Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters in your hand. You can do good work with these. Cut chains, locks, and ropes, especially belts. Why would you say that? It's robust, weatherproof, and well-made. Police issue. Blue. Let's you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge cast the frequency tabler lights up and a green button labeled Prime Line. The soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves cast far and wide. Over this is precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You wonder what the lieutenant's default radio station is. As always, it's DJ Mesh and Felicio, and you're listening to Three Freaks FM, bringing you the hottest, the nastiest, the most vulgar. A flock of seagulls takes off nearby, startled by the roaring radio. Right away, the lieutenant reaches into the cabin and turns off the radio. He's not looking at you as he says, Someone must have been messing with the radio or maybe picked up a random frequency. You wanted the prime line, right? Oh, uh, is that what it was called? <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> Just like, oh, um, is that what it's called? Uh, uh, uh. That is so cute. 
Go for it. Turn the radio back on while it's still on the Speed Freaks FM. Oh, I don't want to upset him, but I want to know. I need to know what the Speed Freaks are, the most vulgar. Souped up motor carriage for one bad, bad mama's boy. For 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 the heavier foot and the freaky armor. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, he's gonna be upset. Look, it helps me to stay alert on long nights, okay? It's a matter. I'm not some kind of speed freak or. <laughs> You would be too if you had this motor carriage. But seriously, let's quit joking around, all right? We have a case to investigate. This is Precinct 57. Can I connect you to someone? Just a second, officer. 102, 105. This is 41st. Come in. Over. The man uses relay code. You've got this. You're a cop. And cops know relay code. This is gonna be terrible. This is gonna be terrible because I don't have anything to report. 10 4 message received. 10 5 relay message. What's your status? Over. 10 18. State your message, sir. Oh! 10 9. Over. 10 4 message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 1022 the captain. Over. Is it him? What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick Mullen from the best seller, Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself. Immediately. They're laughing at you. Ten four, I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me! Mac, come here! You've got to hear this! What's going on? Supercar pair lost his... He lost his... His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Ten nine, come again. I didn't get that. Over. New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him if he's lost his gun too. Sergeant Orson wants to know if you lost your gun too. Over. Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck. You don't know where it is, do you? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. They're bullying me. Okay, it's gone. Your gun is most definitely gone. Ten nine, come in, officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. Lying. Yes. Over the phone. It's easy. Just say it like it's the truth, and then it becomes it. Drama. He says he didn't. Thank God for that. That would have been a nightmare. I don't even want to imagine the poor prick who has to relay that kind of news to the captain. Losing his badge is bad enough. Tell him to find it and fast. We can't have some gangbanger running around with it. We're all glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. 
You need further assistance. Over. Uh, okay. Wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. You're going to be looking at a straitjacket if you tell everyone you lost your memory. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. 10-4, sir. I'm not hearing your question. That's a negative, sir. I got a 1012. Visitors present here. Over. Oh, I'm gonna humiliate myself. What? What is it? He's still on the line? He wants to verify the information on his back. But of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revachoin. Tell him to stop wasting time. What do you need, sir? Over. 10. Um, excuse me, sir. Over. Come again, sir. I didn't get that. 10, 10 9. Repeat message. I didn't get that, sir. Over. What? What is it? He seems intoxicated and keeps asking me to call. Mullen's drunk and emotionally aggressive. That's new. Wrap it up. Don't indulge in his drunken antics. Understood, sir. Over. Roger that. Ten ten. Over and out. That was terrible. Jesus Christ. It's <clears throat> fucking terrible. <clears throat> The red-tipped pry bar has cousin a heavy-duty engraved just below the handle, dissatisfyingly heavy, perhaps one of the most useful tools to carry around. The meanest looking path cutters. <coughs> no chain wire or bomb to keep me look hungry, ready to chew on stew. Steel. <coughs> Wearing the logo. The small dynamo packed inside is a handheld elimination device. Gives the user any time and any time to blah 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 blah. Okay. Oh, that's so fucked up. <laughs> Reva show all round you class you class you Reva show all round you that's it's funny
life doesn't need to be a struggle. <coughs> I'll be with you in a moment, officer. Let me just finish my sandwich. Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. Rene, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. Now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. No, you got this. There's the ball. You're the game. See? Your munching and complaining have ruined my concentration. Could the objective of the game be to throw the metal? Ah, mon dieu. The pain in my back is unbearable. I can't even say if it's in my back or hip anymore. Feels like it's in both. I hope you pass out from it, you goddamn jellyfish. Men like you are the reason this nation is sinking. Trying to throw something as close to a predetermined point as possible. Measuring. This must be. Shush. Ignore them. They don't know what they're doing. They're old. You are letting down yourself and the team. Get in the damn game already. Does it matter what team? Pick a team. Any team. The blue team. Eyes on the ball, Dinky Winky. Oh my god, he's so mean. This felt wrong. Wrong like touching your sister's breast. You threw your sister's breast. Mon dieu! Good job, officer. That was an excellent throw. Your muscle memory knew what to do and went for it. But there were gaps. It felt like you were going for a thrust or a lunge. There was definitely gonna be jumping. Maybe you scored a point, but this is a fiasco. What are you talking about? You just executed a pretty much... How are you ever going to get the officer's shit off your nose, Gaston? Or even climb out of his ass? Probably because those rooster pants are squeezing you senseless. <laughs> Whatever happened to practical, durable, revachol made. Now. Look who's talking. That cockatoo uniform must give him a real advantage when fighting in the circus. Yes, officer. What do we need from these gentlemen? Life, I'll be. Have you no honey? You, I'm trying. These manly men are playing balls. No. You got this. There's the ball. You're the game. Yeah, I slide.
you are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter, you'll make it work. Oh, I'm scared. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. Probably a sponsored ball. Already, your muscles are adjusting to the weight. The nervous system calibrating until you and the ball have merged. A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells, even the wind, everything fades. An embodiment of pure motion. A fine-tuned locomotor running at maximum efficiency. of shit. It wasn't whorehouse of shit. The shot was at least 23 meters, probably 24, and then some. Nothing to be embarrassed about. What the hell is your problem? You vandalized our game, son. We can't play petonk with five bull. Okay, now I understand. That was terrible. Oh, she then told him. But I still felt like shit. That's crazy. Shame. Whining about your back every time you bring out the Rene. You are a man with a fork in a world of I'm trying. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball. That's the spirit. Don't even waste your breath ask. See? Could the objective of Ah I hope you pass out trying to shush. Ignore them. They don't know what they're doing. Eyes on the ball, Dinky Winky. You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack. I didn't even know. 
Psyche is so fucking bad. <laughs> Electrochemistry is fucking shit. These are shit. These are okay. My empathy is either so bad. The drama. Mm -hmm. I'm trying. These manly men are playing ball. No, you got this. There's. See? Could the objective of the game. Ah, I hope you're trying to throw something as close. Shush. Ignore them. Does it matter what team? Eyes on the ball, Dinky Winky. Sure, officer. I am Rene, Rene Arnoux, and my specially abled partner here is Gaston Martin. How can we help you? Unfortunately, I don't. And like most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement in Martinez. The union is the law, so can you really blame them? Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to build- He doesn't know about the crime. Your time is better spent discussing politics. I'm confident they are indispensable in regard to all the paperwork and other administrative duties. But you must agree that nature in her infinite wisdom has made men more fit to perform certain more challenging tasks, don't you, officer? Really, officer? <laughs> Match an average woman against an average man in a dark alley and see who comes out on top. Gender equality is a very noble, very modern idea. But in real life, primal roles prevail. But I do not wish to discuss this matter further. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. I do. Fire from heavy artillery. Why what? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country, execute your supreme leadership, and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Commies, communists, socialists, anarchists, call them what you like. They just chose the name to feel special. Senseless sentimentality. Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped to shrapnel bombs. We didn't, though, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the Suzerain's cannons simply weren't big enough. It was probably a bit more complicated than that. This place is a damn beachhead, son. They had to soften the commies up first. Yes. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, 
blood ground. You got old René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on the city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding the... What do you think? Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one. Preposterous! Surely you don't mean it! I'm just sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those commie hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking my piss, I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachal. Or even if that damn clan frisk instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away and now it's neons. This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. The suzerain is the king! Has everyone forgotten already? <sighs> They've forgotten already. It's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the filth and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. Ah, yes! King Philip III, on his steed! Oh, absolutely! At the mercy of a cocaine-snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury, so... A superpower! Feared and respected! A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. Decisively, without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. And Lesion is only as strong as its leader. That's why it was such madness to try to... Don't get started on that again. What happened, happened. The Carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. Oh, old Philip was a big fan of the purple nose candy the nobility loved so much. A cocaine connoisseur of sorts. <laughs> his egocentricity is borderline legendary. You can't even take the responsibility for yourself. How could you fathom the responsibility weighing on the shoulders of... That's why the Philippian kings use cocaine for clarity of vision, to aid in their work. Of course. Clarity of vision. Awareness. Philip III was even brought into this world with the help of cocaine. The court medic administered the dose to his mother when she was in labor. And it is well known that with the help of cocaine, only the purest, of course, he was able to connect with higher realms. He's just making excuses for the king's habits, isn't he? From what I've seen of the officers of the RCM... I... But I don't want to get into a debate about drug policies. 
Reit. I have really held down myself. This is divine. Yes, that's what you need, Gaston. More padding on that fat ass of yours. <laughs> I hope your heart gives out. René, tisk tisk, it's a little pleasures. Life doesn't need to be a, um, a struggle. Hello, officer. How might I be of assistance on this fine day? Let me think. I heard someone was hanged and left on a tree for a week. But that's all I know, really. Of course, officer. I mean, I hope I can. What? Oh, the goal is to throw you bull. As close to the cochonnet as you can. That's the cochonnet. You'll put that knowledge to good use in 20, I mean 50 years, I'm sh I don't like where this is going, officer. Don't you think we should do something else now? <sighs> Hurry up then. Hello, sir. Step right in. The store is open. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside, minding the register, or organising the stock. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. I'm signalling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance and biographies of famous people. Thank you, sir. I'm happy to help Mum out with the store. I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. Mum says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mum says a proper worker is dutiful. That's how you get ahead in life. 
There is stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting etiquette. Mum says it's peachy. She was a little afraid at first. There's talk about this house being cursed. Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go... Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. We can go into the bookstore and ask about the case. But I don't see much more... Yes. Please do also look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games are there, sir. Nothing really, sir. Mum doesn't allow me to sneak around in the back rooms or the cellar. Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead. Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a puzzle too. You can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. You don't look much like a policeman. Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. Say that? He's not even real. You're real. Cheer up, sir. It's much easier being a fictional character. Maybe you can show me some real deductive police work, sir. Like in the books. You fail to deduce anything substantial. She waits. Intently. Come on, don't be silly. That's not a proper deduction. For freaking sake. My name finds great prices. Perfect place for tear. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hyamdal. Rows and rows of Hyamdala men blur your vision. You make out some titles. Man from maybe a hundred? Man from Hyamdal and the sages at the end of the world. Man from Hyamdal and the false god. Not even close. Man from Hyamdal in hell. Man from Hyamdal and the forest of slaves. Man from Hyamdal under the lake. Man from Hyamdal, Hyamdal burning. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. An endless variety of source books, lore books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, second edition. There's also a large hardbound tome with books in a board game section. Who wants to read books? There's a box that says, We're out, third edition mega setting supplements module. The side panel notes, a fantastic adventure board game. New 
That price is steep, but then it's the third edition mega setting supplement, so it makes sense. Welcome to Crime, Romance and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Be welcome and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. I am the proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Cursed? Who said that? Annette? I will have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It has a robustly... What in God's name is she talking about? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me, was she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Great. On a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. Mind your own business, sir. In our society, people don't get to tell each other how to raise their children. Denial is the way she copes with criticism. kidding there's nothing like that happening good sir what does a young child do with money anyway no I save it for her as a fund she's securing her fund. such criminal behavior would not happen in more developed countries indeed are we done with the jokes now yes we've had quite enough fun here right the woman before you scans the store, her shoulders rigid and tense. Every now and then. Hey! Psst. Yes, you. Word on the street is you're ready to start building communism again. Again? Yes, you're ready to start building communism again. You've built it before. They've built it before. Hasn't really worked out yet. But neither has love. Should we just stop building love, too? I really fucking love this game. Just apes. We should, you should build communism again, you know? I'm a love winner. We stop, we should stop the build. This conversation isn't really about love. Try to keep up, okay? This is about the communism you've promised to build. It's about communism. Word on the street is, it's going to be 10,000 times larger than any communism previously. You keep saying things like, down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, <laughs> impale all people who have more than 25 real in their pocket, literally <laughs> murder all human beings regardless of their political beliefs, yeah. that kind of stuff. He, 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 he's me. <coughs> We should rebuild communism. <laughs> Alright. Funky style. Funky Very funky. Style. So tell me, 
Do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? <laughs> Start building communism. <laughs> failure. It's about failure. Yes, abject failure. Total, irreversible defeat on all fronts. Absolutely vanquished, beaten, curb stomped and pissed on. Until you came along. You will reverse the fortune of the workers of the world. You alone, against every living thing, against every human alive. 800 trillion real in the hands of an impossibly well-organized ruling class. You, against the atom, the charm and the spin, where the whole world failed. Matter failed to bend to human will. Human will failed to get out of bed and tie its laces. You alone, single-handedly, we rebuild the dreams of the now get to work, comrade. Oh yeah, get the firing squads and the animal <laughs> wagons ready. I had a thought. <clears throat> Whole last thought. I love that, just a full kindness. <coughs> Feminist agenda. <coughs> People think communism was some crazy idea that had its com communal pawns 40 years ago, a fever that shook the world, never to return again. They were right, and he woke up today. Spiritual corpse. Blah, 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 blah. For him, communism is still a thing. He will single-handedly raise the commune of eight of O2. Seaweed. He is the big communism builder. Come with him to rebuild communism in the year fifty-one. I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. I have no idea what, what he. I have no idea what just happened. <coughs> you see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Nothing. Now please go back to browsing the books. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put us. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. This is a traditional Seminese ward meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dream, inhabitants of Ile de Fantôme, the Seminine Islands down south. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. Okay. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains. Sir, don't 
touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. I want officer. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? No, it's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. I am sorry, I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't- The curtains do seem frail suddenly, not robust enough to contain a slippery darkness. All I wanted. Thank you. Let's just talk about this first. Talking is always good. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting Rip you. Rip them apart. Rip them apart. I'm gonna... Just give me a second. The plaque on the shelf reads, Biographies of Famous People. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring up. Browsing through all the books with all their names makes your head spin. None of the... Suddenly, a particularly odd title catches your eye. It reads, High, High Speed Love chronicles the romance between two of the finest tip-top tournay racers in history. Oh. One of them is the madcap driver, Jacob Irv. His blonde next to Irv's life story, you see a slim biography of an occidental rock star called the Anti-Star. He's famous for shooting morphine into one of his eyeballs and cocaine into the other. Next to that, Rivasholian radio personality Guillaume Bevy stands in front of a rundown drug den. He's a permanent fixture on Channel 8, reporting on real-life crime and ruining cops' days. I really must insist you buy one of the books. Reading them is not for free. Do still browse, though. But not too long. I'm sorry, I did not mean to rush you. You are browsing. Go ahead. Take your time. Time is commerce. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. This, amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's a, these three things are very important to the working class mind. The point of the book, and many others on this shelf, is to give people medicinal advice in situations where they don't have access to paid health services. Various paranatural books still litter the shelf. Hum, sir, please, no browsing in that shelf. That wisdom is not... I can't have you end up... Like opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh no! These shelves are overburdened with books from the. A couple of spook novels hide amidst all the detective books. Crime fiction is a disgrace. And these books greatly overstate the excitement of police work. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological, not a single mention of all the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you see Dick Mullen on the job? Get me Mullen. The stalwart adventures of Richard P. A killing is declared. Dick Mullen in the murder house. The final case of Dick Mullen, an Dick. obvious lie. Dick Mullen in the clock tower. The ordeals of Dick Mullen. Oh no, turns out he fated to solve a case. Shelves fill to the brim with crime novels featuring the supposedly... St oh 
gonna rip them apart now, for real. The curtains, tattered with age. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back. Come. I warned you, you're unleashing forces. I was not done. A heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semini's trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Only an echo. No one is there. A hollowed out dark echo. I couldn't choose that. I'm gonna go back there. There must be another way into the Beijing. That was so fucking loud. Well. Jesus Christ. That was I can't get involved in this. That was so fucking loud. I. Oh my god. That was so fucking loud. Jesus. Why? <laughs> So much for a quiet smoke. Am I crazy? That was so loud. I can Who are you? Who is this guy? You see a young man on a balcony, nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. It's the voice of someone who has something to hide, my liege. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Is it really that important? Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. I'd even go so far as to say that the view is a little too good, my dear gendarme. Do you have an estimate of when the body will be taken away? We will remove the body as soon as possible. Now tell us. Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Wait. Is someone else investigating the lynching? No, not you two. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Last week? I don't know. Look. He's an actor, declaiming a soliloquy. See how you hang on his every word. You didn't answer the question. <sighs> I had a friend over. It was my Sunday friend. He doesn't reply, gesturing no with his mm. cigarette. 
in the neighboring windows. My name? My name is Martin Martinez. That's definitely not his real name. No, of course not. Could you please lower your voice? I'd even go so far- We will remove- Oh. Wait, is someone else investigating? No, not you. And when did you- Last week- He's an act- You didn't- <sighs> It was my Sunday- He- I'd even go so far as to- We will remove the body as- Oh. No, not- And when- Last week? He's an act- You didn't- <sighs> It was my- He doesn't reply. No. We won't. Jesus. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. Oh, no. Oh, Jesus. Oh. It's time to bring out your secret charm. Tears and begging. begging. Show him your emotional side. Throw yourself before his very feet like a oh dog. Oh my Jesus Christ. Oh my God, this is terrible. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to cry? Please don't go in the ring. You try out leave me. No, for God's sake, I don't want you to cry. Listen, I really have to go. Good luck with the investigation. Aww. What a guy. <coughs> what a fella, little walk. What a fella. Love the boys. He's gone. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking. There has to be a way of getting inside the building. Once we found a way in. Yeah. A stone, like any other, lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. There's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. Jesus. <laughs> it was just a stone. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I just... This must be for the front door. Pity doesn't have the apartment number on it. We'll just have to go in and see. Let's go. Let's go. Damn. Oh, good. I'm fucking, like, fire. Like, damn. What if I just pried it open? Like, what if I did? <gasps> oh, Let's go. I love you. It really makes sense because these empathy stuff, so shit. But my encyclopedia, encyclopedia, is like super good.
little kitty. Oh my god, that's so cute. Do I have a bomb? This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. Yeah. Imagine I just, oh, what can I do? I don't have the, it's not in my hand. No reply. I don't know, my... Just... Just, just do it. This door has been closed with a padlock. What are you doing? You're trying to cut the body of the lock with the chain cutters, and it's really not working. I believe it's the shackle you need to cut, detective. Perhaps you should give it another go. What are you doing? You're trying to cut the body. Despair creeps into you, getting fat on your weakness. You're still coming up with sentences. That's a step up from total annihilation, right? Yes, it can be difficult to be on the receiving end of so much distrust and outright hate. Nothing you can say would make cop gives up the detective genre. Fuck. I need size. Oh, why didn't this work? door has been closed with a padlock? A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. The shackle snaps like a twig and the lock falls to the floor with a little. After you, detective. After you. Let's go. The cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name Grasmazov, nom de guerre, was an economist and a theoretical historian. He was a leading figure in the Grad side of the turn of the century revolution, where he headed the nine-day government. Mazov is considered the father of scientific communism. Mazovian thought. The white star, the photos on the wall, I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting. Whoever lives here definitely shares your enthusiasm. There aren't many communists around, not after the revolution. Some youth still keep the ideology going, it seems. Yeah, I'm not 
you hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the, the walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the a poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Do I have to open the door? Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to- Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. It's generally easier to do things if you have literally any reason. Give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> Go ahead then. What do you want to know? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residence. Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil. Right? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a... What's he in trouble for? Talk? <laughs> what was so funny about that? He lives upstairs in room 28. 25. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the... Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. Ask away, policeman. People come and go. They probably just moved or died. Hopefully somewhere. No one lives there. It's been empty for months. Impossible. I would know if someone had moved in there. Maybe it's those countercultural people again. Breaking into a house like it's a public space. You're a policeman. Be good and take a look, will you? Great. Young people. They're worse than rats. You know, always littering the hallways with trinkets and empty beer can. Oh, that one is a scientist. A future scholar. I think he studies astrology at the community college. Education's good. I always tell something to do with all those stars around his door. He asked me to leave his drawings up on the wall. A symbol of what now? I thought Revachol was the capital. She mumbles some kind of a response, then hacks something. In I'm no one, just an old woman who can... If you can call it living. I have a little room upstairs right next to the... It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain, no. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company. And that she hasn't spoken to anyone for a while. Even her sentences feel rusty. Guillaume Le Mignon. Bad news. Guillaume Le Mignon did not become a cop. In 38, he went on a tour to the Xinyao province in Safre, where he died of autoerotic asphyxiation. His body was found hanging from a decorative dragon tree in his junior suite amid drug paraphernalia, unwholesome objects, and the Sylvia Trainer single Wonderland skipping in the background. And yes, you can take this as a metaphor for Revachol in the 30s, and also as a warning.
What happened here? It will still be accessible through the apartment next to it. That one didn't have a door. Sadly, nothing of great value remains here. Indeed. The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for Hep C. Ask away, pig man, but I don't promise to answer. A brush? An artist? The red splatter is. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Red dyed heavy fuel oil is only used in government vehicles, or at least that's the idea. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. Something to think about next time you're driving around in your pretty little piggy carriage. Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural. An aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home and Mono is here. We rarely see pigs around here though. Just union cads. And my name's not Mona, so. Yeah? Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration... She means the opposite. I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. The lieutenant furrows his brow at another one of your eccentricisms. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish feet. The woman on the boat does not notice her steering. That Ozon her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. Ozon is an archipelago, two days travel away from Rivershot. It's money... Probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. 
run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to us on. Watch your back, ungulate. You've got... Striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat. Good afternoon, officers. I'm Joyce. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. I'm glad to see you here. Like steel. There is strength there. If she wanted, she... I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this... That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. There's a trace of irony in his voice. Mischief, even. This is a tactic. It happens quicker than a shooting star. But did the lieutenant just wink at you? How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation, and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. What we do. I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It is a giant. There was a touch of discomfort there. She wants to merely represent. The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. 
See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with... The Wild Pines Group is one of the original Revisholian Indo-tribes. Companies awarded royal monopolies by the king, the suzerain himself, centuries ago. The king is long gone, but several of the Indo-tribes remain. Son Baptiste, L-U-M, an unknown entity known as Brightest Star. Why, thank you. I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year, the company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. Yes, past a certain point, numbers begin to seem imaginary, but they are quite real for the 72,000 employees who depend. A conglomerate the size of Wild Pines is like a shark. If it stops moving and growing, it will die. Then what becomes of those 72,000 families? It is a tremendous responsibility. They started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Easterlers. Two centuries of care, deliberation and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels pass through the great unrest to re-emerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. You know more than you let on. Certainly it helped, but most of the original Indo tribes have failed or been absorbed. To survive, Wild Pines had to grow and adapt. No suzerain did that. You mean aside from being the terminal's legal owners? who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo. We built this district. We. There it is. She owns up to it. All the best parts of it. Rue de saint Gislaine, with its bastions. The plazas, meteor and mosaic. Even some of the old street lamps have been put back thanks to the investments from the WP. Before Martinez was swallowed by the industrial harbour, even before it was part of Revachol, long before Terminal B was erected here, the Pines built it as a resort for its Revacholian employees. A company getaway? For a weekend or a summer holiday? Then came the revolution. But that's another matter. I'm here to make sure the Pines can fulfill their responsibilities to the place they built. Why, yes I am. Of course there are. We're on an archipelago. How else are you supposed to get around? Yes, we are. We are on Le Caillou. Technically, the neighboring Ozone and Fas Alamea island groups are archipelagos, while La Cayu, by contrast, is a single fertile landmass, the fourth largest island in the world. It is not an archipelago. I haven't seen anyone else drive a souped-up Coupri Kenema motor carriage either. Actually, that motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. It's for crossing long distances in the Greater Ravachol Industrial Harbour. It's not a toy. Neither is this. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances. You need to make this lady admit she's only riding around on this boat because she's rich. Before you do, it would be pertinent to ask other questions. Gather more info on this boat of hers. The boat? No. It is called Cordelati 19, because that's the type of sloop it is.
It's a pleasure craft, a 19 pacer. It also happens to be rated for category one racing. Though these days I mainly use it for business. My sloop? I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the murder we're investigating. Officer, I assure you... The crowns of her teeth are porcelain. The nonchalance might be related to something called the Wayfarer Act. A law that says she doesn't need a license. Sly Fox, you're not aggressive enough to harass her further on this. Good. Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the Union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines. And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The Union stopped all negotiations with- Wait. She just admitted that the lynching and the strike are connected. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. What can I say? The Union employs a giant covered in tattoos. A racist giant. I guess that's part of their big tent organization now. Yes, I believe there is a connection. But that's a subject for later. Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped- And when did you first- I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site. But the strike began in December. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he granted the... This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike. Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more... Ludicrous even. It's meant. There are leaflets everywhere, and banners. What did they say again? Every worker, a member of the board. Most of the workers probably don't know what that means. Then you might also like their other slogan. Demand democracy. Personally, I don't think it has the same pizzazzo as every worker, a member of the board. It's quite simple, you see. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about what? About anything. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines Group. That may well be. It's not up to me to decide who is king, but as negotiations go, I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position. A hard-nosed tactic with a side of... And now, people are getting lynched, I hear. 
behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. Excuse me, from whom did you hear about this lynching? I first heard it from the boyer at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was, call me manana. This checks out. The scabs? You mean the huddled masses of Jamrock come to plead for work where the Union refuses to? Don't let her answer it herself. If these strike breakers were organized by Wild Pines or its affiliates, then it would be a company secret. I could not share it with you. It's implied. She's open to discussing this matter with you at a later occasion. Mr. Clare told him to... How did he put it? Fuck off, midget. Gaumont is short of stature, you see. Keep in mind... This is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before. Everard Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of... Of course not. Everard is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. If you were to prick him with something sharp, you could see it oozing out. A knife, maybe? No, a rapier. He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemable... Yes, Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does, and when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. The Debardeurs Union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act. But they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter election. A mob. The Debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, I suspect we'll be forced to cooperate with them. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask. I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Debardeurs Union is... Why do you think so? What she calls corruption is simply an aesthetic category. Point taken. But enough about Everard. What else can I do for you?
I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman. Disappeared? Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she... This forewoman, her name? Sadly, the company records do not even give a name. She's just forewoman in private correspondence, Polly. I don't even know if it's a sir or given name, and I don't have access to the Union's files. Downright haunting, if you ask me. The, what the point of the presentation is, these kinds of things... Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. Of course. How else can I help? Quite a few things I'm... The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi, from Precinct 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. How curious. Why is that, Detective? I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? Oh dear. Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he is. Of course, I sympathize, but I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen... She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. Of course, but bef the situation is extremely volatile. The sooner we can speak about this... Of course, detective. You hear someone walking around inside. Excuse me? You have plenty of reason to enter. Oh, come on! Well, that was smart. Satisfied? My name is Marielle Charpentier, and I'm an agent with Martinez Realty Associates. I am not breaking in, as I have every right to be here. The keys, see? Boy, there are a lot of different keys there. More than... Do you want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit too? It feels flimsy in hand, with the words Revachol Zone of Control, written under a nondescript municipal logo. There's a picture of her with shorter hair inside, along with all her personal... Thank you. Do you have any questions? I need to be back in Midtown in an hour. I need to get it ready for the next lease, but as you can see, the previous tenant completely trashed the place. It was some kind of a moribund old man who used to be a business owner. A sudden serious look crosses her face. But that was months ago. Anyway, was there anything you wanted or is that it? I'm in a hurry. Oh, that's another huge mess. The former tenant owes us three months of rent. Three. We closed the apartment and planned on auctioning off the valuables, but... And again, I have no idea how stupid mistakes like this can even happen. But Ron, when he came to close the door, didn't close the neighboring door. And there's a hole in the wall. A hole in the wall. Can you believe it? 
And then the tenant ran off with his stuff. He's gone. The money's gone. Just like that. The sum must have been puny. Well, it does not disappear from my hands. No, I don't let it. These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous architecture, a million real view of the bay, good ventilation, neighbors, life, spark, and they are affordable. I'll tell you, Martinez has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with... Don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to find the time or... Both apartments are now unrentable. Both. Of course. Mmm, the luxury of fine things. Just look at those black monk straps. After spending an entire day hustling, who's to say that you didn't deserve a pair of ridiculously expensive shoes on your tired feet? Beautiful things give you a rush. It's power. Craft in your... Remember, when they come to take it away from you, you worked for those shoes. Whether you like it or not, we're in the either a gateway drug or a booster pack to get you deeper. That isn't just a five pointed star, it's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of com the star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the Communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment and fear in equal measure. To symbolize the toppling, also some social democrats were already using it. The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It was about building a society that could exist in a because white is the color of peace. Gone. Gone is the glory of hope. Only the scribblings of impoverished students remain in dirty hallways. You are the big communism build.
This door is made of metal and a number 28. This is where the cle- Let's see if anyone's home. No, no one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the- We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? Tomorrow, 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Good, let's go. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment build. Remember, tomorrow, he's probably gone for today. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Hard to say. Your vision is blurred and you're having difficulty concentrating thanks to your relentless hangover. Cop habit. You look at This isn't case related, you think. No. These tracks are not interesting at all. Let the street sweep. The pig's getting pretty close to me. Come to snuff my... Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pig, I'm going away for a... What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? What's this kid sh... Get the fuck out... So it's a girl. such a thing as an ugly kid. Oh yeah, Napa Goofy Kuno! Right in the dick, Kuno! Get him right in It's love it in the dick! The boy is sweating profusely. His eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Fuck that! Kuno, yeah, right! Shit and Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener.
Conspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. Because there's a secret door hidden behind. There it is. You see a shabby little door. What is this, Dan? Still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. There's a good vague way to ask where he stands on drug use. Professionally, I mean. Perhaps not. This is below our pay grade, detective. However, see that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? The secret path the local kids use. like someone left. When the wind ruffles the cloak, you can most definitely see a white director. Yes, it's pro you could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. The wind is aggressive up here. The lieutenant looks at the enormous... That machine is a Kvalsund 1020HK. Is it? Kvalsund makes a lot of heavy equipment, but, but I digress. We were focusing on your cloak here. The cloak? I do think... Well, it doesn't seem too dangerous. The cloak looks like a bag of goodies floating in the wind. What are we doing? We're awfully close to breaking into the industry. Or it could be that we are just exploring. You're not a gymnast, you're a boxer, and you've climbed way too high up here. You could have died there. Shit, 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 shit. I'm failing you. This wasn't part of our deal. Hey, hey! What happened? I understand. We can always come back when you're feeling better. It's just a cloak after all.
corpse looks at you. You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears... Active decay. He's about to blow! Cop's gonna blow, Kuno! Can't you see I'm throwing rocks? All right. The kid moves his irregular speech patterns, overconfidence. Could this kid be on drugs? This warrants further investigation into this Kuno. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It and then what? You fucking there? You fucking Kuno's kingdom? He's trying to fuck at you again, Kuno! That's where Kuno gets his Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old, but you could have... Oh, that? Kuno decapitates pigs? That's just a Kuno demo tape. What? Eh. Uh, what is this shit? Fuck your shit back to normal! Well played. No one saw that coming. It's a vitamin p You could use them. Yeah, it's... Oh, don't teach him, Kuno! He's gonna use it against you, Kuno! You're not getting this... Fuck you, pig! Don't do mag! You're gonna... Is it? You got pretty fucked. Kuno's surprised you've still... Don't sweat it, drunk pig! He's saying you climbed up there. Yeah, that conclusively explains... Of course you fucking can! How do you think Kuno knows? Kuno and... That's all there is to it, then. Don't be a... Good call, pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Kuno doesn't... There are several footprints in the mud, left by work boots. Anywhere from 6 to 12 peers have walked here. Heavy workers' boots would reinf- Isn't this something an industrial worker would wear? Noted. Maybe more than twelve. No. Eight pairs of boots have shuffled back and forth in the mud. One. Standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 46. Two. Standard work boot. Steel reinforced toe. Three. Hobnailed work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Number 43. Four. Standard work boot. Number 45 or 46. You don't know. Five. Another standard work boot. Steel reinforced toes. Six. An aberration. Light as air. Even pace. Same make of boot. But number 41. Impossible to tell. Could also have been an adolescent. The gait is undeveloped. 7. The glowing outline of a standard work boot. Number 46. But the imprints are twice as deep as the others. 8. And yet another standard work boot. Number 44. There's an aberration in the pattern of the sole, however. The right sole is smoother. More worn. How many? I was pretty off then. I counted 20. I never got the hang of it. Hyperopia. Do you see anything out of the ordinary? Two hundred? Could it be the combined weight of two people, one carrying the other who's tied up? Let's say a heavily built worker, carrying a similarly... He might be right. 200 kilograms of living weight is unlikely. Possibly, yes. But why? Yes, they could have used the makeshift stretcher or just march him up to the gallows. Even easier to carry on a stretcher or between two men. Anyway, it's for future consideration. What else can you see?
this whole time. Anyway, I'm back. A woman or a kid? Understood. Anything else? Interesting. Let's name it the old soul. Someone operating a workbench with a pedal? Like a joiner at the harbor. Or maybe a drummer? No, it's not. Forget I said it. We are not looking for a drummer. Perhaps it could be a driver. A driver would wear out the right shoe before the left. The accelerator is on the right. We should keep our eyes open around the traffic jam, see whether anyone strikes out as a potential suspect. Seems prudent, no? Mm -hmm. A week, maybe? Seven days would fit the time frame provided to us by the caller. It is not impossible. I pulled last week's forecast for coastal Havashol. Seven days below freezing. The day before, the day of his hanging, was the last warm day. Correct again. Sub-zero temperatures would preserve the tracks in a good state. The commotion here could have taken place a week ago. What do I think? A mob of people brought something heavy to the tree. One of them was carrying the victim. They shuffled around, especially under the tree. Then, after hoisting him up, they stood in a semicircle facing his direction. At first glance, this appears to be a lynching. Indeed. They all stood in a row here. Yes, everything fits so well. Carried him over, hoisted him up, watched him hang. The lieutenant's eyes narrow. He's thinking to himself. Either way, what else? <coughs> Fuck, does Kuno okay? care? Kuno doesn't... Fuck, does Kuno okay? care? Right, pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. Fuck do you want with it? Dunno. Kit is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or... Look, Kuno... Yeah. What was she... Fish is sometimes used to fertilize the soil. Yes, it seems suspicious. You... Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. The fuck do you want with it? Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno. Kuno's Kuno? It's always Kuno, never I. Clearly the kid's using the third-person perspective as a shield. Kuno doesn't do that smart shit. Stop trying to get Kuno. Watch out, Kuno! He's trying to fiddle you! Help! Pigs! Help! He's... Everyone can hear. You need to get the hell out of here before. Help! He's dick... Escalate, Kuno! He's dick... Pigs in here in Kuno! Somebody, please! How did we get here? How did this happen? This makes no sense. There may still be a way out. Just appeal to his reason. Look f For emphasis, a ghost is saying this. A shit-eating psychopathic ghost with an ace. I know you wanted to hit me. You got that I'm gonna fuck that Kuno up look that Kuno's dad gets. The murder look. Relax. He can't read your mind. There's a dead body, remember? That's what you were doing here. You're a cop on a case. I can. Kuna can smell that violent shit. 
I'm gonna fuck that Kuno up. I'm gonna shut his shit down. You know what? You should have hit the Kuno. Because now, you're nothing. You're a joke to Kuno. Kuno... Kuno turned you into his prison, bitch. You're gonna be... No, you're not. We can just leave. Bitch, you're gonna be in this shit with Kuno. A peepo is a type of hat, by the way. Talk to me about my fucking people. You don't know where I come from. You just Kuno's bottom bitch. Okay. Kuno is kind to his bitch. Ask your questions. But remember, this changes shit. Click, 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 click. Yeah. The kingdom of Kuno. The fuck do you want with it? Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't shitload. Don't tell This is where you quickly ask him questions. Real cop questions. Like a cop. Just a couple of pig. Yeah, you tell the faggoty Kuno. You're testing. Get lost. Kuno doesn't fuck. Mazovian socio economics. Nought point nought 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 percent of communism has been built. Evil child murdering billionaires still rule the world with a shit eating grin. All he has managed to do is make himself sad. He is starting to suspect Krasmezov fucked him over personally with his socio economic theory. It has, however, made him into a very smart boy with something like a university degree in truth. Instead of building communism, he now builds a precise model of this grotesque, duplicitous world. I guess. This goal, I'm having thoughts out here. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated. The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth, more instant and more familiar than anything you'd expected. More fever than odor. It fills your mind, flushing you from within. <laughs> Feel a great force ringing from your stomach until a pool of vomit lies. The smell of Commodore Red rises from the pool. Among it, distilled spirit and bits of shish kebab. It's okay. Happens to everyone. Keep it. Oh, that is so sweet. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. There's the fruit nearby. Maybe they have some in the apothecary. There's a greenhouse here, and a gardener with a wheelbarrow on the corner of the whirling in rags. Hmm. Pretty clever. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier to the white check. Modifiers make checks easier and allow you to retry them. Adorned with lace and a tiny borrowed 
Portier. It's raining again. It was clear just an hour ago. Well, uh, this might be the last snow we get. At least snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything green up in the spring. At least that's what my grandma always told me. Yes, think about the cute grandma, not the weird snow. All you can see is the fact that her skin is a different color from yours. That's literally all. You're gonna have to run with that. Jesus Christ, oh, I'll see. What does that mean? I don't know. Whatever's on the radio, I guess. What does this have to do with snow or gardening in March? Uh... We should probably proceed with our business in Martinez. Unless you have more official questions. Sure, I'm the go eat. Okay. How did it was such high percent? That was crazy. Like all the love of my happiness. It's just insane. It's raining again. It was clear just an hour ago. Well, uh, this might be the last snow has no... Yes, think about the cute grandma, not the weird snow. Stop looking at her. Look around. What do you see? That's right. And the canal, the bookstore, the harbor gates. This is a great vantage point for keeping an eye on you. No, of course not. I don't understand what this is about. The kid did this, right? The red-haired rat? Can't say a sentence without or kipped? He's always giving me trouble. Maybe you shouldn't be. I mean, you do your job. But that kid is beyond help. You've been resting here for quite a while, haven't you? Yes, I'm tired. I understand. The RCM isn't welcome here, and the locals want to keep an eye on us. There's silence. The smallest of smiles. That's okay, miss. Do what you have to do. I think we're done here. Let's go. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers. There, he still is, looking right through you. The smell is repulsive. It pushes in from your mouth. Too late, until a, the smell of Commodore Red run. It's okay. Happens to everyone. The hangover is clearly making this worse for you. You could use some ammonia to clear your head. There's the frit nearby. There's a green hop. Hmm. Acquiring ammonia will provide a modifier.
It's raining again. It was clear just an hour ago. Sure, I'm done with it. Go easy on that stuff. It gave me a terrible... Excuse me? Oh, well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. Okay. There, he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does. The ammonia only makes it worse. The combination forces tears out of your duck. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. Nor does the wind right now. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. That's probably a good idea. Clear our heads. But before we can do that, you need to get your shit together. Wow. Oh my god. Okay. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go. Your shit is a pot, and I'd rather I'm becoming of a cop and a human being. It's supposed to be the opposite of that. Together, compress in a small area, and to achieve a solid level of shit compression, squeeze your butt cheeks together for 30 minutes. Do something similar with the two hemispheres of your brain. Talk to people. Maybe that will help. Okay.
Oh, sorry. Oh no, they're not so cute. <coughs> um. Okay. Then we go back to her. Yes. This Postla Vantorie mail collection box, a faint sticker on the side reads RCM Emergencies Desk Number 8102, with a slow. Box seems happy. <laughs> so Eat nice. shit, pig. Fucked by the coon. And sent G with a crown have been scribbled on it. Jenny is a whore and best set mailbox also. The mail collection box seems cathartic, thankful even. So do you. You shudder, then you swallow. Can I don't go? I don't want it. It's a good mailbox. Give me a moment. I see. I hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. <coughs> yes. Well. <coughs> I hope they're good people. Your statements are too vague to comment on. I just, I just, I just want something simple. Still didn't find the other shoe. This coin operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubble gum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. Probably some kids. A simple but clever solution to ruin in a coin operated viewer. It, a thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word Onuk written on the other side, with N and C scribbled backwards. That's Kuno on the lens. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys appear. Behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church on stilts, lanky weather-worn wooden planks, <coughs> an X-shaped cross topping its tower. You know this to be the star of Perikonassis, or the Cairo. The central symbol of the Perikonassian church, a star, 
a great moral height. Around the large wooden building you see chunks of sea ice gathered on the beach and a small tent set up on the ice. Vigilance officer, what can this all carry? It is such a pleasure to see you again, officer. I'm sorry, officer, but I really don't share food. The only one you have. The sandwich looks like a culinary wonder. In addition to the obvious slice of ham, a fat one. You notice a brim of a tomato peeking from below. Oh, that's good. That's very good. The worn and beaten wooden planks of the bed. Hmm. We can sit on benches after we've solved the murder. You can revisit the bench, if you ever need to pass the time when Lieutenant Kitsuragi is gone. You see a Samaran street vendor surrounded by a motley assemblage of goods. When he realizes you're looking at him, his face breaks into a wide welcoming. The name Sileng is embroidered over his breast pocket. Happy shopping, officer. Everything's cool here. Everything's cool. The goods are cool. The customers are cool. The place is cool. And one more thing, officer, you're very cool. Bang, 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 bang! Oh, yes! You got style! You got personal style! You know what you like. You like premium menswear. Look around and browse. Everything looks cool on a guy like you. Take your time. Only the coolest goods in Revashol. I've got sneakers, speakers, extremely comfy pants too. Try them on right here. No shame, only freedom. I'm an entrepreneur, officer. I've got good joke, officer. <laughs> and we don't have permits. Just you glance around the decrepit buildings, the miserable weather, the sun. It's beautiful. Beautiful freedom. It is, yes. It That's right. No permits, no bureaucracy. That's why this city and its low officials are so cool. Hyper cool. No need for discounts at ceilings, officer. But did he first mark them up 100% just so that he could put them on sale? My man, you know how the game is played. You and me, we should work together. What do you think? Anything for you. You mean these delicious pre-packaged shelf-stable meal kits? Really easy to cook, no hassle, really cheap too. Buy some, try them out. No hassle. There's a little of a hassle here, it appears. A moral hassle.
it is practically free yours for 5 cents a piece rock that tuna why not some macaroni too no problem here officer i get all this from oh he's a good guy i think you'd get interesting me it's a boring story officer who cares about the past this man probably comes from seagai sometimes known as the apricot suzerainty an archipelago in the samara isola very sharp officer i'm serais from the seagai province of the serais apricot suzerainty calls to mind an era when the seagai archipelago was colonized by revachon it's a bit of a slur in other words The apricot suzerainty is what the Seagai archipelago is commonly known as in Revachol. It's a bit of a fraud term, I'm sure you understand. No, no, apricots come from Seagai. My grandma used to grow them, but Seagai is a shit hole. That's why I came to Revachol. Here's much better for in the speaking of. Why not support an independent local entrepreneur? I send half my profits back. No need to dress this one up. Just tell him what you want. Oh okay. But why, officer? Ah, yes. Are you trying to ask for a bribe? If so, you're not doing a very Sorry, detective. There are clothes inside. Don't be shy. Save the economy. That sounds off. Haven't you heard, officer? We've got to be economically conscious. Recycle your cash. Keep it in circulation. Don't buy new things. Buy eco. Very cool. The ec you find your hands deep in tattered and faded garments made. The box smells like cat piss or like an old person. Economical but also trendy. Look first hand, buy second hand. Keep the economy Something cold grazes your hand. Synthetic and sleek, a windbreaker. Surf, it says, but also wind. Summer, 100%. Good choice, officer. Mega sporty. And it's only 450 for you, sir. Good day to you, officers. A burly man hangs out by the waterlock, carving up a generous serving of salami with an old hunter's knife. His eyes are fixed on a man stranded on the other side of the waterlock and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down into the canal between them. My friend Barry the Butcher is stuck on the other side of the waterlock. I'm keeping him company, and eating his salami. From the corner of your eye, you see a man in a yellow shirt and grey overalls waving at you from across the canal. 
He seems disappointed about the wreckage. Very good stuff. Anything I can do for you, officer? I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Rivershall. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here. Especially a water lock. The rest of the coast is closed off till then. Well, there's the fishing village, an abandoned fish market, a bizarro church. Not much use to the congregation, though. There always seems to be something wrong with it. Yeah, not really much else. Just bombed out ruins. Sure thing. It is salty. It is savory. It is chewy. The hangover only makes the... Want some too, officer? Why not? Volumetric ship compressor. Bizarre scientific news from Rivershall West today, where a police officer's shit has been observed at a pressure of around 495 gigadecimals. These metallic hydrogen levels of shit togetherness were thought to exist only at the center of collapsing stars, not law officials. It remains to be seen how long the shit's singularity lasts. of indicator lights are missing from this control. This panel usually closes the water lock, turning it into a bridge that lets you cross the canal. But there's a crashed samaran. A rusting con This panel you pull the lever all the way up until the nothing happens. Nothing happens. A cold gust of... Mm -hmm. The spring brings the lever back to its original position. You still need to close the water lock to get across the canal. Wasn't there a sign over there saying functionality will be restored on Wednesday morning? It's not often that I see officers from the RCM in my pawn shop. What can I do for you? Oh no, not at all. I... Who are your customers usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, trap. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. It keeps me entertained. I doubt it, but I can try and answer any questions you may have. 
I do my best to keep my distance from all- He doesn't know anything. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colors. Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. This is a pawn shop, and it did feel as if you've met before. Oh God. The lieutenant shifts from one foot to another, alert. She didn't seem like a policeman. Truth be told, she was... Right, so, let me get this right. You sold your sidearm, issued by the citizen's militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it? <sighs> yeah, it's not good. I do hope we manage to clean this mess up somehow while also keeping our focus on the murder investigation.
You... Uh, you were adamant about getting rid of it, officer. Said you were undeserving of a service we And I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long. Off the charts, vote on him. My apologies, officer. A needle in a haystack. There is nothing you can do about it now. Of course. Sure thing. Sure, man. Hey, so we've been monitoring you internally, and now we know your copo type. Yes, guess what's yours? Yes, sorry, cop. The cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? Oh, you know. Apocalypse. Superstellar. The advanced interesting cop. Liquid shadow cop. But you're too sorry to say those things. So, what? Jealous of the sorry cop? I They'll be super, super fine. It'll be totally okay. You can dual copo type from sorry to anything. Yes, yes. Impotent rage and lamentation. Let's wrap it up. Of course you are. It's okay. See if you can get something out of this, like info. Or maybe every time you say you're sorry, you get a million bucks. That won't happen. See rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the trinkets displayed on the table. Some on horseback, up. You see rows of toy soldiers guarding the rest of the... Why? What's this? A headless man riding a horse. A headless man wearing futuristic tracksuit trousers that save foul. Oh, that's the headless phone rider. The Headless Fawn Rider. It's an urban legend. About a man who rides the streets of Revachol sporting a fawn tracksuit. As you see, he's missing his head. Fifty cents. Bargain price. I'll throw in the tiny cap too. I think he's looking for it, or something. That part of the... He lost his cap when he lost his head. Perhaps he's looking for the head. Big men on big horses, clad in lamella armor and carrying a fleet. Franco-Nigerian knights. I used to be very serious about these guys. This set of soldiers isn't meant to look impressive. A few have rifles, but most of them carry pistols. Some even shovels. And You're probably talking about the revolutionaries, yes? Yes, I think their poverty has been exaggerated for effect. 
When you place them next to the Royalist, it doesn't seem like they could possibly win. Maybe. They're not all blue. These figurines also wear gold coats and caps, complemented by orange trousers. They are variously posed. We'll this is what the Loyalists looked like, yes, at first. Then they wised up and got camouflage. Which ones? Ah, Royalist soldiers from the time of the Revolution. The uniforms are painted a bit too brightly, I suppose. Did I mention that this figurine is supposed to be lucky? Always carry it with you. large red t-shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other garb. Oh yeah, the print depicts a muscled man striding toward you, a giant sword in each hand, the antlers on the hood of the man's cloak and his piercing blue eyes are familiar. It smells like worn cotton and a little worn cotton with a side of flea market oil. Sniffing is okay, but please don't try anything on. Can't have you leaving your photon emissions in the fabric of things you're not going to buy. It's the man from Hendal. Walking away from his burning village, yes. The man from Yelmdal is the hero of a series of pop- In fact, most people don't think that man from Yelmdal ever really existed. Hendal isn't a real place. Neither is the man a real man, of course, but both the man- Wow, what? Wow. I mean, even if the man from Hjelmdal didn't exist before- Okay. You sound skeptical. It's not that complex. Besides, I've been to Kotla, though not quite as far north as the Hjelmdal and watched Northern Lights travel. It's for the best, because Eomdal is not a real place. His theory isn't exactly incoherent. Too real. That's dirt cheap. You should. Typical Martinez streetlight sits among assorted floor and table lamps. The light pole has been carefully cut. This would make quite a statement in your living room. Yes, officer. As you... His manner is casual, but his speech is careful, measured. He wants you to know that he has nothing to hide. It was brought to me... We are not here to investigate the theft of city property. You have to admit it's rather clever what he's done with it. 700 real. A bargain, I dare say. Hey, I don't know where it came from, but it's not every day you get to buy and sell something so... The boomboxes on the shelf look well loved and well-traveled. One especially catches your eye. Just make sure it works before you buy it.
there he still is, looking right through you with his white eye. Ha ha ha! Again, the corpse laughs at you, pus dripping from its mouth. There he still is, looking right through you with his... As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's a smell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to... It's a puzzle. What's hanging in front of you is a puzzle of decaying flesh. That did you after seven days, yes. We are... The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enamel boots. His skin is greenish marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them, delicate and fragile. They feel alien to the world around you. These are clearly not boots. They're armor, possibly part of a larger set. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not... Oh, the lieutenant uses a Mnemotechnique A6. That's not just any notebook. It's a classic. It's clearly some manner of super armor. Or future armor? Super future armor? I'm useless. Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Under the hill. Fairweather. Fairweather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Piece by piece. He's been out here for seven days. We should keep a look up for these pieces. The armor could yield information. Maybe he'll know something. The sabatons dangle off the man's. It is. It's expensive. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to serve. For a full set, about four years of wait. For the northwest region of Revachol, an officer's average yearly income is 5,500 real, unadjusted for rank. As a wage, it's regrettably small. But for a piece of hardware, yes, that's a lot. That's for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the Harbour Company. But that's just hearsay. Just something I scraped together from my station. An area report on Martinez. I'm sure you did the same. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. A small bell-like sound fills the air. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally from plate. Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones, like whirls of floorboards. The design looks organic, influenced by highly resistant wood materials, like lignum vi If trees were made of porcelain, this is what their cross sections would look like. The smooth, glossy surface fractures into ever more intricate. The whorls are in the shape of a letter and number combination. E50, 100. Good. Can you read it to me? X54156745678 222. Let's lie. We have a make and a number. That's something. We can use the radio in my kinema when we're done. Either station can chase it for us. The stench fills your nostrils. Stop! Pig's gonna pull his head off. <laughs> Brutal! What's wrong with you, asshole? I don't know, baby. I don't know why he's such a. 
Officer, if I may ask, what were you trying to achieve by putting on the deceased foot? The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt. His torso, the hangman's knot, is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch. This is a steel-reinforced cargo lashing belt, big brother of the regular... Airlifting? I thought it was used on lorries for strapping cargo to them. The local harbor uses six rotors to shuffle containers around. I get the sense they use whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. I'm still approaching this as a lynching, yes, motivated by the ongoing strike. You? Seventy percent of the cases I get are just filling in the blanks on the initial report. This belt worries me. I was afraid it would be. Thin steel wiring, parallel strands, this makes getting him down more problematic than I had assumed. A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. Could be. The shape of the branch supports the theory. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. Their concentration is highest around his heart. of no nation that I know of. If anything, it reminds me of religious illumination, last or penultimate century. Men who live harsh life, I agree. <laughs> He wears a wide leather belt around his waist and a gun holster under his arm. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper. In case we need it. Yes, it is pretty cool, isn't it? There is only one ampoule left. Use it wisely.
It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We'll need to show it around. Sure. Just don't lose it. The glossy-eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute, and his skin... You've acquired an interactable item. Investigate this item further by going to the... In his eyes are milky white and blind to the world. Protruding comically, dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The, de the corpse looks right through you as you distance yourself from its stench. Eyes like a shark. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent... This is a trick. You've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours post-mortem. You can use it to see if the corpse has been tampered with. Does his position at the time of death match the discoloration? Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. I see it. His neck too. The lividity goes right up his chin. We have good, well-pronounced discoloration here. The monster comes back into focus, an explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach... So what do you think? Agreed, especially on the neck. The belt acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis supports her hanging. Yes, there's always a chance we are wrong. We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. A pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck are you saying? <sighs> Talking about shit. Malicious laughter erupts in the yard. Sounds like C <laughs> Big said he's a f <laughs> The lieutenant's face is made of stone. I agree. His personality is no longer a part of the world. Totally dead. Sure. The corpse looks by, oblivious. Black decay liquid. I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made up. Stop talking in riddles. It means you fucked him up good, Kuno. Fucked him up brutal like. But there is no breath to catch. Only the cadaver filling the air and your nostrils. He slowly rotates. Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? 
We might miss some of these things once he's done. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt, his torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. The lips of the corpse are swollen. Who is he? He is male, 40 to 50, with an athletic build. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle. He doesn't actually think the challenge is unique. He the cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting the airship strength material. Someone else? You mean like the police? Sadly, yes. The whole RCM is out there right now, doing the exact same thing we are. Are we in a rush to help them? Not with this on our hands. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us. And we have a growing sanitary concern here. We need to get him down, climb up there and saw the branch? There has to be a less risky way, with less falling down of trees. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The Union appeared to be... I would really prefer if there was another way. These people might have an agenda. But what other options? The corpse twists on the belt, like chicken on a skewer. Yeah! Bang! How? Where the buckle ties the rope to the branch. That's a good spot to aim. Where? Ah, yes, I see. If the shot hits that, there might be a chance to release the belt. Yeah, now we're to- They'll miss! The pigs will miss, Kuno! What else can we do? We are not getting him down already. Not getting him down is a task that's already accomplished. Sadly, it's not our job to keep him up there. How do you plan to get him down then? With social sensibility? Are you going to educate him down? He breathes out. Oh yeah, do this shit! Fuck it up! Silence. With his elbow sharp, the lieutenant unzips his and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks. Securing it in place. That's a Keel A9090. Armistice, mass-produced muzzle loader, ascetic, frugal, one of the most com He then steps back and assumes the fellow's stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. He's gonna fucking me! The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself. God damn it. A lot of things were wrong with that shot. The fellow's test was the wrong choice. His shoulders were raised, but above all, he cannot trust his eyesight. Fucking idiot! Mukaba asshole! Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? Kuno sorry too. Kuno feels sorry for the Beano clad. The lieutenant doesn't say a word, just looks at the gun in his hand. 
I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him done. You know, you don't feel like too bad of a shock to yourself. Okay, they do have the tools and the men. And since it looks like they put him there... <sighs> okay, let's do it in the lousy, dangerous way. From the gate, by negotiating or fighting. Or we can try the secret route we found, where your cloak is. It looked doable. To the gates, let's negotiate. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso of the hanged man, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time, the, li the pattern still kind of has an ethnic feel to it, but nothing familiar. I guess I'm way too sleepy to continue this debauchery. And I need to get a party. So horrifying. Hmm. This is quiet. That's it. Um, good night, this fucking girl.